Yo, yo, what up, my beautiful Dowdies? How's everyone doing today? I'm your host, Fao, and let's talk about Aventurine. Aventurine is going to get a rerun soon. If you're still wondering on what to do, if you should pull for him, if you should skip, what his value is on your account, then you clicked on the right video. In this video, we're going to go talk about Aventurine's strengths and weaknesses, what team setups he can be used in, and just his overall value on what he can provide for your account. Let's get straight into it. Should you pull or skip? for Aventurine in Honkai Star Rail. Now, the first thing, of course, as you can instantly tell, is that it's a sustain unit. This is not going to be a DPS. This is not going to be a support. This is going to be the safety unit for your team. Something straight up the bat that Aventurine has. He has a way of kind of dealing damage or just getting a good flow going while keeping your team alive. One of the three sustainers that do that really well. Of course, we have Gallagher, keeping your team alive while dealing damage. Linksha, the five-star limited version of that, doing insane amounts of damage and also keeping your team alive and cleanse. And then Aventurine. Aventurine doesn't heal like the other two, but he applies a shield. And this shield is amazing. This shield is very good. And on top of that, he can do some follow-up attack damage, dealing imaginary damage to the enemies. And I think right now in the meta, these are the top tier supports that are just really easy to play around with and just give you an insane, an insane stat bonus on your teams. Aventurine, of course, specializes in that follow-up attack. The top dog right now would be Fei Xiao. All of the supportive units for follow-up attack, you know, they really like Aventurine. His follow-up attacks really make sure that this team composition or any follow-up team composition, you know, gets a better flow going and he will keep your team alive no matter what. The best shielder in the game is going to be Aventurine. Right now, there's not a better shield in the game. This character is anti-one-shot, you know? Aventurine is going to be very good for you to not die. I think Linksha and Gallagher, in a way, if they have a very, very big ability, or maybe they get CC'd, so they get a little bit, like, cut off, and they can't really do their thing and cleanse and whatever. Aventurine is... It's very unlikely for Aventurine to get in this situation because of the shielding. Shields go on top of the health bar, so you get, like, an extra good amount of health. And this is, of course, why the one-shot capabilities of the enemies are not going to be there. He's a very safe unit, and the shield is on a scale. It's not going to be like Japart, where you have to charge up energy and get that ultimate going, right? Very, very comfortable unit and can be played in multiple teams. We talked about follow-up attack, but of course, Acheron, which is also going to be a rerun with Aventurine, is also going to be very good. They pair very well together. Aventurine is also just a very good all-rounder sustainer. It doesn't really matter if you do have Acheron or Feixiao. If you are in need of a sustainer and you really need something safe, and it can provide you a lot of value, and you are looking, okay, I only have maybe the free Natasha, maybe I only got a Bailu, you know, you're trying to expand, Aventurine is going to be a very, very good pickup for any account, because you can, of course, make your account into a follow-up att attack account or an Akron account, but... Fear not, if you don't really care for these things, it's going to be an all-rounder good supportive unit, and it can be slapped on on many, many team compositions. If you actually look at his traces and we look at what he does, his basic attack deals imaginary damage equal to 50% of Aventurine's defense. Of course, this is going to be a defense scaling character, which is also going to be very nice for your relics, you know. It's not that hard to build this character. Very nice. Then his skill, provide all allies with a fortified wager shield that can block damage equal to 60% of defense plus 80, lasting for three turns. When fortified wager is gained repeatedly, the shield effect can stack up to 200% of the current shield effect provided by the scale. So here you can really see that the shield is just not only going to be there permanently, you know, but it's going to stack and, you know, it's going to be a super comfortable thing to keep your team alive with. Then the ultimate randomly gains one to seven points of blind bet. Then inflicts unnerved on a single target enemy for three turns and deals imaginary damage equal to 162 of Aventurine's defense to a single target enemy. When an ally hits a target, the crit damage dealt is increased by 9%. So now, this is one of those abilities again where you are really seeing the strength of Aventurine. You can now chip down their, their imaginary break bar, you know, you can do damage to them, but your main DPS also gets a nice crit damage boost, you know. This is really what we can see that Aventurine is a phenomenal unit, very nice. Then, of course, the talent, the big thing. <laughs> it's a lot of, lot of text. Let me move my head over here for a second. For any single ally with fortified wager, so his skill, his shield, their effect resistance increased by 25%. So not only are you going to get a good shield, 
you're also very unlikely to or more unlikely to get CC'd. And when they get attacked, Aventurine gets one point of blind bet. When Aventurine has Fortified Wager, he can resist crowd control debuffs. This effect can trigger again after two turns. Aventurine additionally gains one point of blind bet after getting attacked. Upon reaching seven points of blind bet, Aventurine consumes the seven points to launch a seven hit follow-up attack. With each hit dealing imaginary damage, equal to 12% of Aventurine's defense to a single random enemy. Blind Bat is capped at 10 points. So this is, you know, this is where you stack up the those Blind Bats and then at a certain amount, 7 is going to deal out a follow-up attack. This is, of course, going to be very beneficial if you're trying to get some damage going for Imaginary. Again, you know, if you put Aventurine in any type of composition and you just want to get that shield broken, like those three musical thing that we have in the MSC right now. He would be very good at breaking the imaginary shields, but this is considered follow-up. So this is really where he shines with synergistic for follow-up attack, right? This can really batter battery face Shao. This is going to be very good for the ratio. You know, this is going to be very nice. Then the other traits are just going to be imaginary defense, all the good stuff, effect resistance. Very, he's a very well-rounded character in the traces. Very nice to think about as well. Then we have the technique. After using the technique, one of the following effects will be granted. There is a chance for defense to increase by 24, or a high chance for 36, or a small chance for 60. When this technique is used repeatedly, the, the acquired effect with the highest buff value is retained. So you can just cycle, try to get a good value. Very nice before battle. This is really, what I like about this is one of those techniques that doesn't have to open battle, right? Because he's a supportive unit, he's a sustainer. This really matches that. Then the white trace is going to be for every 100 of Aventurine's defense that exceeds 1.600, increases his own crit rate by two up to a maximum of 48. So this really helps him get that good crit damage crit rate ratio on top of being a good sustainer very nice when the battle starts grants all allies forward with wager shields whose shield effect is equal to 100 percent of the one provided by the skill lasting for three turns so you're instantly safe it's a very very big thing actually i really like that and then bingo after a teammate with fortified wager launches follow-up attack eventually accumulates one blind bet point over 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed watching my videos how about we change that subscribe Thank you. This effect can trigger up to three times. Its trigger count resets at the start of Aventurine's turn. After Aventurine launches, launches his talent follow-up attack, provides all allies targets with a fortified wager. Yet again, you know, he's going to apply that. So we have to move it again to big pause. And they can block damage equal to 7% of Aventurine's defense plus 96. And additionally, grants a fortified wager that can block damage equal to 7% of Aventurine's defense plus 96 to the ally with the lowest shield effect lasting for three turns eventually as you have to see it like as a as a robin in a way in my opinion robin and eventually are kind of the same you know robin is extremely good in follow-up attack and can provide a lot of things for follow however she also functions in other team compositions and she just shines in follow-up attack, but it doesn't mean she's bad in other ones. She's also going to be very valuable in other compositions. Aventurine is going to be the same boat, you know? Like, insane in follow-up attack, but very good in other compositions. Now, in my opinion, Aventurine is also going to be a very good free-to-play friendly character. And what do I mean with free-to-play? You just need one copy, and he's going to be very good. You don't even need his signature light cone, in my opinion, because there's a lot of good preservation light cones, four stars, that could work with him. And another thing that is really fun is going to be Japart's light cone. Japart's light cone is so good that you don't really need his signature. Increase the worst defense. You want that by 24. Effect hit rate 24. Okay, sure. Cool. You don't really care about that. And that increases the chance for the wearer to be attacked by enemies. When the wearer is attacked, increases the defense by an extra 24, you know? So you get more chance to get hit and eventually wants to get hit you know, this is going to be very good. He gets his energy flow going. You get defense. And when you get it, you get more defense. Extremely solid light gun. If you have this, just settle for this. And eventually is going to be a very, very good unit. Because there's a bunch of other four star light guns that can be very good. And you can just find a way to make it work, you know? He's very strong on his own. I don't think a light cone is needed. If you want his light cone, does the following, increases the wearer's defense by 40%. When the wearer provides a shield to an ally, the wearer's crit damage increased by 40%, lasting for two turns. 
when the wearer's follow-up attack hits an enemy target, there is a 100% base chance to increase the damage taken by the attacking enemy target by 10% lasting for two turns. You know, of course, it's going to be better, but eventually it doesn't really need this in my opinion. The raw stats that you get from this light tone is very good though, so you can also consider that. A good option if you are missing out on bad relics or something. I don't think that it's going to be the case though. Eventually is going to be very strong on E0, S0. He's super easy to build. He can go in a lot of compositions. He's going to be an insanely good sustainer to pick up. Now, the, we talked very good about him, of course. What are the cons for Aventurine? Pretty flexible, so it's not going to be in a way of like, yeah, if you don't have follow-up attack, don't grab him, you know, because he can also work without follow-up attack. He can also be played in every single mode. He's going to be good in Apocalyptic Shadow. He's going to be good in MOC. He's going to be good in Pure Fiction. He's going to deal damage to everyone. I think the only con to him, in my opinion, is if you already have a few sustainers. Let's say you have Ho-Ho and Gallagher already, you know? The value of just getting another sustainer then drops. If, especially if you like to play Break, Hyper Carry, DOT, or any type of energy, Yon Lee or Argenti, you know? If those are your playstyles to begin with, then eventually it starts to fall off in value because you don't really need him if you already have those two good sustainers. Maybe you have a Link already, which is also going to be very good and can also work with follow-up attack. So the only reason why I would like not consider Aventurine if you're trying to save up maybe for the next patch, because next patch is also going to be very big. And if you already have enough sustainers that work on your account, then I would be like, okay, if you're clearing content, you don't need another sustainer, then stay away from Aventurine. He's probably going to be better than most of the sustainers that you have on your account, but it's not enough of an upgrade to actually get it if you can already clear a bunch of stuff, right? Eventually, it's going to be very good if you really, really like a follow-up attack, or if you really need another sustainer if you're struggling, or you just need a better all-around sustainer for your account. I also am pretty confident that eventually is not going to be power creep anytime soon, meaning that... Yes, there's probably going to be a new sustainer uh, from now to 3.0, right? It's probably inevitable. However, Lynx is also going to be re getting rerun probably in that time. And it is not that likely for him to get power crap because he does sh shine in follow-up attack, right? If you really, really want uh, follow-up attack roster, I don't think they're going to make a better character than Venturine for follow-up attack. So you're going to be pretty safe with that as well. Very, very easy to pick up, though, you know, but I said before, just one copy. So it technically would only need 160, 170 tickets. However, if you do this your 50-50, might consider if you do not need a sustainer to maybe save your guaranteed for someone else then, right? That's the only thing I would consider. However, you probably kicked on this video on like, what should I do? What does your account look like? Do you have two good sustainers already? Can you clear content? And what other team compositions are you like to play? If you can answer those questions for yourself, you know, you can just scan your account, take a step back, you know, take a, <laughs> a good time to review your account and what you are possible or what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing. I think you should get a relatively quick answer on Aventurine. Example, I can clear pure fiction. I can clear MOC. I can clear Apocalyptic Shadow. You probably don't need him then. If you're struggling with one of the two, maybe you can pick him up. If you don't like follow-up attack, you can probably skip him. If you're a newer player, I highly recommend actually getting uh, Venturine because you're probably missing out on a good sustainer. I think the question asks for itself if you're going to need it or not. Because Honka Star is turning into a pick-and-choose game. The game is evolving, right? I do. If, if you want to clear everything and you care about the best potential and the strongest setup for your accounts, Venturine is probably going to be one of the most recommended and needed puzzle pieces for a lot of these compositions. So he's going to be a very, very up there character to pick up for a bunch of compositions, you know? So do keep that in mind. However, he's not needed if you can already clear stuff. Of course, if you enjoy Aventurine's design, lore, whatever, you just love him as a character, always pick up characters on this channel. We always say, pick who you like, you know, you need to find in this game. It's going to be very good though, because you're lucky that you like Aventurine because it's going to be broken as well on top of that. Very good combination, of course. Yet again, one disclaimer, you know, there are probably going to be a bunch of patches after this, you know, 2.7 looking very crazy. 2.8 is probably going to also be very, very insane. Do beware, if you don't really need it, I would probably skip because there's probably going to be a bunch of characters and things that you are going to be very interested in. Just a heads up. Hey, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Really helps out the channel. It means the world to me if you could do that. Make sure to join the Discord. We're trying to grow the community even further. And if you want to support the channel even further, then become a member. I love you all, and I'll see everyone in the next video. Take care. Peace.